Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So, on this lesson I'm going to continue the minimalistic UI that we started two lessons ago. And I'm going to extend the window with more functionality. I actually want to add an expand here so that we can close it. And I'm also going to be adding some Unity events so that we know when the window is getting open and we know when the window is getting closed and we can actually attach some actions to that. So I'm going to start by just simply just creating a new UI component and then call it button. And I'm going to attach it to be on the top right. So that's going to be the anchor. And before we keep going, let's go back into Photoshop. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm just basically going to clone the, the play button. And we're going to make a X. So I'm just going to do clone it. And this is going to be close button. And we're just simply going to move the whole thing. So let's move it there. Uh, actually undo. Undo, undo. Let me just move it that way. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna I'm gonna create a I need to it needs to be much smaller, but for now I can just delete that and we can go back into our custom shape shape tool. And I'm gonna find something that resembles closing. We can use that, or let's say if we have something else that looks a little bit better. Or we can create our own if that's the if that's the case. Let's let's select that one and see how that one looks. And let's move it, move it up. I think that looks great. Then I'm going to change the, the fill and use my color picker. Select the same color as my play button. Hit OK. And I think I'm happy with that. That actually looks great. And then we can just say this is X. And this is my button. Excellent. And I need to resize it. I don't want it to be to be that big. Uh, something like that. That I'm going to move my window layer down so that I can put things on top and we can do I'm gonna uncheck out of select so it doesn't it doesn't basically try to select another layer and let's go back into close let's move it right above it excellent and we can we can probably perfect so let's actually add a little bit of a, a radius to the button so that it looks good with the and let me move this a little tiny bit excellent and let's zoom in so we can see the whole thing and let's try a 10 I think a 10 works just fine I'll try a 10 on that side too just not sure if I want I don't like it <laughs> let's actually do this I think I only want the Okay, I like it like that, where we have a little roundness on the top right, and then the other ones are are just flat. Okay, perfect. Let's see. Um, actually, let's go back. I'm going to actually change all of them to 10. And this one also going to be 10. Okay, it's 10, 10, and 10. Thought I didn't like it, but I'm actually resize it just a tiny bit. Resize the whole thing. And just put it in place. Okay, I actually like that. I think the X is too big. And the X does not need to have a border. So I'm going to remove the stroke. And I'm going to make the X much smaller. And, and this is the process, I mean, in, in every game. I always say this, you have to go back through a couple of times until you're happy. So I think I'm happy with that. Let me actually just size it just a, light, a little bit more. Okay. Okay, I, I, like, I like that. So I'm going to move it to the right. I'm going to put it just right there, and excellent, yeah, I think I'm happy, 
Let's actually size it. I think I'm happy with that, that's perfect. So I'm gonna align it with the button on the top. Okay, and let's just see save. Let's go back into Unity. And we need to go back into our image. And let's just go ahead and slice that new icon. And I'm gonna do, do it manually, just by selecting, left clicking, and dragging. Okay, and then hit apply. We're just gonna create a new sprite. And now that we have a new sprite, I should be able just to replace the current one with the one that I just created. And let's do it one more time. Excellent. And remember, we need to do safe native size. Excellent. And now what I'm gonna do is just put it in place. Remember that by default, when you create a button, it adds uh, text automatically for you. We don't need text for this button. So I'm gonna remove it. And I'm going to just properly set it. Something like that. Right about. The border is bugging me. I think the border is just too much. Can go. Yeah, we don't we don't need a border around that. So what I'm gonna do is on the button, I'm going to remove the stroke. And let's hit save. And we don't need to re-slice it. Oh actually that looks way better. Okay, that's cleaner. Okay, excellent. So now we have a button and it doesn't really do much. So we need to hook it up to our window. So let's go into Visual Studio Code. And I'm just simply going to copy this component. And this is gonna change to button. This one is gonna be header, close, button, component. Excellent. And everything else looks great. Excellent. So right now I don't have, like if I, if I look at if I look at what the button has, there is an on-click event that we can add. We can either do it through the inspector or we can do it through the code. I, I want to do it through the code because I'm gonna add a Unity event that will tell us when the, button, the window is actually closed. And I'll show you why that is important. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go here and I'm gonna say add listener. And then this listener that we're gonna add is basically gonna say close closing and we can just call it closing window and this is gonna be our listener so when the when the window starts it's gonna hook the header close button component with the listener and then when that gets when you actually click on it it's gonna call this meta which therefore it's gonna do some other things that will code in a second Excellent, and before we keep going, let's do debug.log so you can see closing window, even though we're not closing it just yet. Okay, now let's go back into Unity. And we're getting an error because we go back into it and see why we're getting an error. And I think everything looks fine. So this is saying bound does not contain a definition for Oh, okay. It's actually on click. Because we need to tell it what type of listener we want to add it to. So it's going to be on the on click event. We're going to add a listener and it's going to be closing window. So let's go back into it and let it recompile. And let's see. Let's see if this is working. Say play, nope. Let's actually do lowercase on click. Yeah, and that's what it was. This is actually a property on that object, not a meta. So looks like everything, yeah, it looks like we're not getting, this is just basically saying that I haven't hooked up the button, which is what we're gonna be doing next. So we're gonna click on window and then associate that window with the also see the button with the window close button component, which we just did. Excellent. So now let's let's do one thing here and let's just hit play. I just give it a second here to compile. Excellent. And now let's hit, and you can see that the close window 
method is getting executed. Excellent, so that's great. It's, it's getting executed. We're tracking when we are closing the window, but I want to be able to do more things with it when I'm closing and also when I'm opening. So what I'm gonna introduce you to is actually, it's something that is called Unity Events. And Unity Events are amazing because you can actually control through the inspector what happens when a, when a Unity Event gets triggered. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say private and then Unity Event. And if you notice, I have the Unity Engine Events namespace as a using statement, so you'll need that. And then this one is gonna be on show, and I'm also gonna do one on close. Let's actually do on open and then on close. I like that terminology better. And then we'll just do two more serializable fields. Excellent. And the other thing that I'm gonna do is I wanna hook them up when I'm when I'm starting the game. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna check if on open equal null, because I wanna make sure that this is actually getting set and I'm not getting any errors. So we'll do that and we'll also do the same thing on close. Then we'll instantiate a new Unity event. Excellent, and the next thing, so this is basically preparation to that. Then the next thing, I want to add a handler that can be executed when, when on open is triggered. So what I'm gonna do is actually do void on, so we can do on window open, then we'll do this, and then we'll add one more for on window close. Excellent, and in here, we'll just do at listener, and then for the on open, we'll just do that method, and then we'll do the same thing with on close on close and then on window close. Excellent. So let's just put all the all, all the listeners together so we can add a comment in here. Adding listeners. And then this is gonna be our sanity checks. Excellent. So we have our open listener which is gonna be this guy and we also have when the window is closing this is gonna be this guy. So what I'm gonna be doing now is let's actually add debug.log on, on one of these, on each one of these, so that we know a window open, execute it, and then we'll do a window close, execute it, and we'll just keep the same structure here. Closing window, execute it. So this is for our button. So Let's actually change this to on close but button so that we know that it's actually when the button it's actually getting executed. And we will do that. So this is for window open, on window close, and then on close button. Excellent. So the the other thing that we need to do is we actually haven't triggered them just yet. So we know that when when the game's starting, we're gonna be calling on window open. So we can just say on open invoke, right? Because we know that this is gonna be as soon as the game, as soon as the start method gets called, we want to open the window. In this case, and also when we're closing the window, we want to call on close invoke. So basically when we're closing the window, we're calling the the methods that are associated or the actions that are associated with unclose. And then when we're opening, when we're opening the game and the window shows, we show that as well. Okay, excellent. So now let's go into Unity and let's see how this looks from, from the inspector standpoint. And you can see that it actually shows some different things. We have methods that we can execute. So when I say methods, it's actually anything that we that we want to execute on the open. Unity gives you this inspector, which is really, really cool. 
because I can say, you know, when when on open is executed, I can do basically anything. I could actually just say progress bar, and I can go to the progress bar, and I can execute any methods that are associated with the progress bar, and I can do the same thing with on close. So let's leave, let, 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 let's leave this as it is. So let's leave this as it is, and then we'll go back through it and add some more components to it. So what I want to do is I want to be able to click on, on settings and basically open the settings window. So we're going to have to restructure the code just a little bit different. So to do that, I'm going to introduce a new method here because I don't want the window to, to be open by default. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say public void open. And then the open is going to basically allow us to open, open the window. And then I'm going to move the unopen invoke to that method because that we're, we want to execute that event when the open method is called. Excellent. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to say game object the set active equal to true. So when I'm closing the window, which is this method right here, I want to actually close, basically don't show it. So I'm going to say false game object it's gonna be false so we're, we don't basically show it and we can actually just add it at the end excellent and everything else should be just as it is excellent and we can actually add we can actually add another method to close it close which is going to be which is actually going to be these two methods. So when we're closing the window, we are going to execute this event, and then we're actually going to close and hide the game object. Excellent. And then since we're invoking this guy, it's actually going to execute this. Perfect. And so now the other thing that I'm going to do is if you go into, into Unity, let's go back to it. I think it's compiling. Yep, it is. Okay, so what I want to do is I don't want to show this by default. I want that to be hidden so we don't see that. And then what's going to happen is on the settings button, we're going to use its on click event to actually show it. So I'm going to add a new event and I'm going to select the window. And then I have a window script. And remember, we have an open and close. So I'm going to say open. And excellent. And let me make sure on my on my button on the window, I'm gonna add a new event to the to the button that I use for closing the window. And I'm gonna basically associate the window to itself and then window and then close. Excellent. And let's actually rename this to say close button. Okay, excellent. So if everything works and I structure everything correctly then we should see the following so I'm gonna hit play and we're gonna go here we're gonna say I want to go to my settings my settings are showing and then I'm gonna close my window and you can see a windows close it's getting executed successfully I can actually go here close it here close it and a window open executed successfully as well so that's really all I wanted to show you in this video, just to kind of give you a recap. I introduced you to Unity events, which we used to determine when the windows was going to get open and then also when the window was going to be closed, which basically allow us to do other things after the window is open or after the window is, on, is closed. We also did some sanity checks just to make sure that we associated Unity events with the the two Unity events objects that we had, if they are null, meaning that somebody hasn't actually assigned those through the inspector. And I also created an open method, a closed method, and different handlers for handling when the when the button was closed, when the window was open, and then when the window was closed. So that's everything I wanted to show you in this video. If you guys have any questions, let me know through the comments, and don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Thank you.